What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking the all new ASUS ROG Ally X to the next level. Now, I completely understand that first and foremost, this is a handheld gaming PC. But with the addition of USB 4 on the X, it's easier than ever to really up the GPU performance by using an external GPU. It's got USB 4 and USB 3.2, and on the original ROG Ally, we could always connect an eGPU, but it was kind of specific. The original didn't have USB 4 or Thunderbolt, and it had what was known as the XG Mobile port, and it did work out really well with the correct GPU, but we were very limited, and the price on those can definitely get on up there. And the bandwidth of the XG port is definitely more than USB 4, but I still think we can see some really great performance over USB 4 running at a 40 gig protocol. So in this video, we're going to be adding an NVIDIA RTX 4090. Is this overkill for the ROG Ally X? Of course it is. Is the Z1 Extreme going to bottleneck the RTX 4090? Yes, it will, but it's not going to bottleneck it as much as that USB 4 connection is. Either way, I want to see what we can do with this setup, and in order to get it connected to the ROG Ally X, I'm going to be using the Razer Core X eGPU dock. Unfortunately, the case just won't fit on top of this with that RTX 4090, and I did have to add a different power supply because there just weren't enough 8-pin connectors for this massive GPU. Getting it all connected is super easy, and one thing I do like about the X is we've got two USB Type-C ports. Like I mentioned, one USB 4, one USB 3.2, so we can also plug other devices in. With this Razer Core dock, there's no extra USB on it. That's one of the downsides to it but it does do 100 watt PD charging out. And by the way, the little dock that I'm using here is only here for those extra USB ports and obviously the stand itself. Super easy to get this set up. All I had to do was plug in the eGPU, download the NVIDIA driver. There's a couple other things that I like to do when I'm in dock mode. I definitely want to make sure that we're getting enough performance out of this Ryzen Z1 Extreme. Doesn't make sense to plug all this in and run in, let's say, quiet mode at a 10 watt TDP on the CPU side of things. So we're going to head into Armory Crate SE. Performance, I'm in manual mode and we're just going to max everything out. So we've got a sustained TDP of 30 watts. For two minutes, it'll do uh, 43 watts. And I believe for 10 or 20 seconds, it'll do 53 watts. But you know, while gaming, we're probably going to be sitting there around 30, 34 watts. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this setup. As you can see, we do have that NVIDIA GPU activity monitor going, the RTX 4090. Just give you a look here Ryzen Z1 Extreme. 24 gigs of 7,500 megahertz RAM, and of course, that RTX 4090. 24 gigs of VRAM, and I've disabled the iGPU. That way, when I get into a game, I don't have to select the GPU. It's not automatically going to select the iGPU here. And when it comes to these Thunderbolt or USB GPUs, there's a couple tools that I use just to make sure we're getting the proper bandwidth, because not all docks and cables are created equal. One really good tool is Kudazi. So in my experience, if we take a look here in performance, I usually test in heavy load mode. Right here, host to device. Anything between 22 up to 26 is really good. I'm right there at 24. USB 4 is 40 gigs, but the dock that I have here is actually a Thunderbolt 3 dock, so it's only up to 32. And even then, I don't think I'd see much of a difference here if I had a brand new dock. And to tell you the truth, I really haven't seen any faster docks on the market. But another thing you can use here is actually just GPU-Z. PCIe X16 4.0, but we're only running at X4 3.0. And just to make sure, yeah, X4 3.0. That's exactly what we're going to be doing over USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4. I'll tell you, in the past, I've actually had issues with different cables. So like new USB 4 cables that say they do up to 240 gigs per second. You buy them on Amazon. Sometimes you'll only see this go up to around 18. And you know you're not going to get the maximum performance out of this thing. So definitely stick with a really good cable. Okay, so now that I know I've got a decent connection, what I wanted to do was show off some benchmarks here. And the first one we have on the list is 3D Mark Night Raid. With the RTX 4090 connected over USB 4, total score here 56,949. I also ran Firestrike 37,200. And finally, we've got Time Spy with a pretty impressive 19,538. And just to put this into perspective for you, I also ran a benchmark on the iGPU for the ROG Ally X without an eGPU connected, just working with those integrated graphics 3,518. 
So we've definitely got a significant jump in performance, and now it's time to see what this thing can do with this RTX 4090 attached. First up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 4K ray tracing ultra with Nvidia's frame generation turned on. Without it, we're at around 56 FPS, and that's because we don't have enough bandwidth over USB 4 for this RTX 4090. And just to give you an idea here, if you take a look at Afterburner running up in the top left hand corner, you can see that that GPU usage is anywhere from 75 up to 86%. GPU power up to around 230 watts. And in a PC connected over PCIe X16, this thing is usually pulling 350, 380 watts. We should basically be maxing this out at least up to 90% with the settings we have here in Cyberpunk 2077. On the built-in iGPU, there's no way we could run this game like this, even if we're using frame generation. So yeah, I mean, you can definitely game at 4K on this. And I'll tell you, there are some games that work better than others over Thunderbolt or USB 4. One that's actually given me really good results is Helldivers 2. Right now, we're maxed out with no DLSS. We don't need frame generation or anything like that. 4K, getting an average of around 89 FPS. I also wanted to show off Overwatch 2, and I know this is a very well optimized game, but right now we are at 4K, 100% resolution scale, epic settings. And usually in my main rig with an RTX 4090, we can get much more than this, but I'm not complaining at all because we did manage an average of 162 FPS with this game. Horizon Forbidden West is one of those games that's given me issues while using an eGPU, more specifically USB 4 or Thunderbolt eGPU. Right now, very high settings, 4K, it's looking pretty good, but you'll see it start to stutter. And there it goes. So the bandwidth just can't keep up, and no matter what I do here, even if I go to low settings, we will see a higher FPS, but I'm still going to experience this weird freezing going on. This is really how it's been with this game. And back when Spider-Man Remastered was released, which was ported over to PC by the same company, Nixus, we had the same exact kind of issues here. So hopefully this will be fixed. I think down the road, we could see better, smoother performance out of eGPUs on this. I wanted to go back just a bit. One of my favorite games, GTA 5, totally maxed out at 4K. I mean, we've got everything except for the internal scaling jacked up all the way. I've been seeing an average of around 123 FPS, and of course, if we had this in a real PCIe X16 slot, we could probably get much more out of this game here. But you know, given that we're connected over USB 4, I still think we're seeing some pretty decent performance, especially because we are at 4K, very high settings across the board. The next game I ran a benchmark on was Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and I had a really weird bug happen with the built-in benchmark. So right here, it's supposed to just go on through. But for some odd reason, this happened. Now, I did run it again, and I was able to get through the benchmark, but I've never seen that before. Highest settings, 4K, 104 FPS. So obviously, there might be some weird anomalies every once in a while when using an external GPU. So I'll tell you, with this one, I actually saw some pretty good performance. Recently, I tested this in a much larger build with an RTX 4090, and totally maxed out at 4K, I got an average of around 98 FPS. This is still a bit all over the place using this external GPU, but it's much better than I thought. We're at 4K, very high, no DLSS. So obviously, this is performing really well, even though it's connected over USB 4. And it is an RTX 4090, so I kind of suspected that we'd see some really good performance. It's definitely overkill. This CPU can bottleneck the RTX 4090, but in this video, really, our bottleneck was that USB 4 connection and the bandwidth that we can get through that connection. In all actuality, I'd say one of the best GPUs that you can pair up with this is going to be the RTX 3060, and you don't need a dock this big. There are some listed on Amazon right now for a pretty decent deal. It's going to take up a lot less space, but with those, you will have to add your own power supply. 
or you could go with one of the all-in-one eGPUs on the market right now. Uh, GPD has the G1, 1X Player has their 1X GPU, and there's a few others out there. But basically, all of those are going to be using that RX 7600 MXT, which is still a great performer, even over USB 4. You might be able to get out a bit cheaper by building your own. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. And if there's a lower end GPU you'd like to see tested on this, again, I think the RTX 3060 is kind of perfect for this little situation here. Let me know in the comments. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.